I've been a big fan of ScreenFlow for quite some time because it allows me to capture my Mac screen with ease, but it contains a ton of power user features in a very nicely wrapped package. Now, some of you may be asking, Jeff, why would I consider spending a hundred bucks on a screen capture app like ScreenFlow when there are lots of other options available that are much cheaper? In fact, inside of macOS itself, you're going to find QuickTime has a built-in screen recording feature. And that's actually a very good question. If you don't screencast on a regular basis, then QuickTime probably will be just enough. But if you do this on a day in day out basis, or even just semi regularly, you're going to appreciate the things that ScreenFlow brings to the table and you get a free trial as well. So you have nothing to lose. You might as well check it out. So as we walk through this video, we're going to talk about 10 or so basic features found in ScreenFlow. We'll get more in depth in later editions, but for right now, we're going to talk about some of the basics. So let's get started. So here's the question. How do you go about getting ScreenFlow 6? Well, the easiest way is just to head over to the Mac App Store, pay a hundred bucks, you get ScreenFlow 6, right? That is the easy, simple, no brainer way. Uh, the way that I prefer, however, is by going over to Telestream's website, the developer's website. There you can download a free trial. You don't get a free trial on the Mac App Store version. You can try it out, make sure it's actually for you. Then once you are ready to commit, you can download it. And once ScreenFlow uh, comes out with additional major updates, paid updates in the future, you can upgrade very easily. There aren't a lot of hoops to jump through like you will have to with the Mac App Store version. You get upgrade pricing. It's super easy, super straightforward. The software is the same. I think either way, you're gonna be happy with the decision. And one of the things you've no doubt seen me do in some of my videos is to zoom in on an on-screen asset that I'm currently talking about. So for instance, here with system preferences, I'm gonna place my playhead right about here. And then in the inspector, I'm going to add a video action under the video tab. So I just click where it says action, and then you'll see a video action placed on the timeline. Now, what I can do is that I can select that video action and I can zoom in using the scale options like this and position using my mouse to the exact location, just like that. So if I'm talking about system preferences, I can zoom in to system preferences just like that. So when I move the playhead back, you're gonna see it zoom back out but as soon as it hits that video action, it's gonna zoom in just like that. So if I was talking about system preferences, that would be perfect because the user or the viewer could actually focus on what I'm talking about. Now, what if I wanted to zoom all the way back out and move on to the next part of the session? Well, there's you know a handful of ways you could do that. I could, of course, add another video action just like that. And then I could basically type 100% in scale to scale it back to 100% and then change my position to zero by zero. So I've basically zoomed back out to how things were before. So you can see when I play, it zooms in and then it zooms out, right? But I'm gonna command Z on that and show you a easier way to do so. So I have my action here where it zooms in. I can go up to where it says actions and then I can add a snapback action and then select video and that will snap back to the previous setting. So basically, zoom in and zoom out. So I can snap back without actually having to manually type in uh, those values in scale and position. So very handy tool to use, the snap back tool. Now say you wanted to call out a specific portion of the screen. So say I wanted to bring attention to the touch ID portion of system preferences. Well, there are lots of ways that you can go about doing this, but one of my favorite ways is to use a freehand call out. So to do so, you can go up to your inspector, click the call outs button, and then you will see the call out action. So I'll just click action there. I'll select freehand, and then I'll select the little square tool here. Now I can just draw a square around where it says touch ID like this. And that brings attention to the touch ID section of system preferences. But you can do some more things to draw more attention to Touch ID besides just highlighting it. So you can use these tools over here. I can choose to zoom up and that is a very powerful tool um, to bring attention to your particular item. You can also build in and build out. So this adds a little bit of animation uh, so it's not an abrupt call out when it zooms in. So let me just show you an example here. Just play it like that. You can see how it sort of zooms in and then it zooms back out just like that. 
Now here's something to consider, how to adjust the length of an action. And you can see why this is important because with this particular call out, you can see it's just a little too long and I'm actually dismissing the system preferences window and that call out is still on screen so it looks kind of weird. So what I basically need to do is just reduce the length of that call out so that it doesn't interfere with me closing out of system preferences. So basically what you can do is just position your mouse cursor to the beginning of the call out or the end of the call out and just drag like this and you can adjust the length just like that. So it's easy to adjust the length of an action to make an action longer or shorter just by dragging the action on the timeline. So in ScreenFlow, there are basically two types of zoom that you wanna be familiar with from the get-go. So you can zoom in on the composition window and you can zoom in on the timeline. And both are important to be able to see important details and be able to use precision when making cuts and things of that nature. So to zoom in on the composition window, you just hold the command key and you can press the equal sign to zoom in like that or you can press the minus sign while holding command to zoom out like that. That is very simple, very easy. Of course, you can always go up to view and then you can zoom in, zoom out, zoom to fit, zoom to 100%, etc. Now, when it comes to the timeline, you wanna be able to zoom as well, right? Because you need to make those precision cuts. So to zoom in on the timeline, you just wanna move the playhead to wherever you wanna zoom in on. And then you just press the plus sign like that to zoom in and the minus sign to zoom out. Now, of course, you can also use the little zoom tool in the bottom left-hand corner like that. And again, it's going to hone in on the playhead. So if you reposition the playhead like that, you can use that zoom tool. It's gonna to zoom in right where the playhead is. You can also hold down the option key on your keyboard and use your mouse to zoom in or out like that. Now, it's very important to know how to split a clip because you may want to remove a portion of the clip. You may want to move it to another position on the timeline or move it to a whole new layer on the timeline. It depends on your needs. So to do so, all you need to do is place your playhead where you want to split the clip. Make sure the clip is selected and then go up to where it says edit and then choose split clip. Now, you can also use a keyboard shortcut and that's going to be the T key on your keyboard. So you just press T like this and you can split the clip. Now it's just a matter of moving the split clips or deleting them if you wanna remove them. So you can drag this one down to the next layer or you can just outright delete a clip like this. One of the great things about ScreenFlow is its ability to automatically create transitions when you overlap two clips. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. So I'm gonna make a cut right here where the mountains are and I'm gonna wait till it switches over to this desktop and I'm gonna make a cut right about here and I'm going to overlap these two clips once I delete this middle portion here and you're going to notice that it automatically creates a transition so watch as I overlap you see that little a there that is a transition it defaults to a crossfade and we're done that is all you need to do so I'm going to play this back and show you what the transition looks like just like that ScreenFlow 6 makes it super easy to adjust the volume of the tracks in your timeline. To do so, just click a track with audio and then click the audio button in the inspector and then adjust the volume just like that. You can also mute audio outright just by clicking mute audio like this. So once you're finished with your creation, you can easily export it and either save it on your computer or publish it to a particular service like YouTube or Vimeo or Google Drive or Dropbox or Wistia or Telestream even has their own cloud service. So you can go in here, publish to YouTube. You can log into YouTube. You can set all your options and then publish it. Uh, that's one option. That's one route you can go. You can also go to file and just select export and export it in a very high quality to your desktop uh, for local archival or if you're uploading to YouTube and you want to do some more edits in Final Cut Pro first, you can do that. This is usually the option that I use. And there's also a really cool little feature here that lets you set defaults. So if you want a particular default that you always use, you can do that as well. But again, this is just the very, very, very tip of the iceberg when it comes to ScreenFlow 6. This is an extremely deep app. It may look simple on the surface, but there's lots more that it can do. And we're going to be back with additional tutorials to show you how to do additional things in ScreenFlow 6. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.